Hi, it's Jess here from Nigesa Creates. Thank you for joining me today. So, I'm here with another mass make. It's March, doing mass make March with Corey Darman. And I'm also making my swaps for the Rachel and Bella Crafts. Now, by the time you see this, I'll have, the, the retreat will have happened. Um, but I am doing this... Um, in readiness for the treat retreat so in part the first bit of this i mass made all of these tags we're going with a spring theme and um i did say oh, that i don't like yellow i won't be doing using yellow and it's all very yellow jazz so my i was doing hidden journaling spots that's what i picked to do and so we've got this little envelope and it, I, I've designed it so that it can be glued to a page on three sides so you've got a pocket. Hence why I went above and beyond and, and I've made a tag for everybody. And then you flip this up and it reveals a hidden journaling spot um, underneath. So that is um, my swap. Um, so... I made these out of um, a 12 by 12 sheets of paper. Well, two 12 by 12 sheets of paper and then a few little bits and bobs. Um, I am using 12 by 12 for this. So I'm going to, I did the first one as a prototype. Um, so that's come out of, it's hard to see because I've got other bits 12 by 12 underneath there. So this was one sheet of 12 by 12. So these measure six by four. So you're going to get six from a sheet. So I need four sheets because I've got to make 20. Um, so, um, well, I only need two and a half, three and a half sheets, don't I, really? Um, if I've just done my maths right quickly in my head. Um, so, yeah, this is quite thin. Uh, One-sided scrapbook paper, which um, you may know that I'm trying to use up. Um, and um, I didn't want the thick stuff. I have got a much thicker um one but um i just felt it'd be too thick for a little journaling spot um i mean it probably would work but i just then decided i'm going with this particular sheet and so that was that so uh i could coffee dye tea dye um but i've decided to go with the distress ink smushing because because that's fun and then it and then i don't have to wait too long so i'm gonna smush them all i obviously did that one just on its own but um let's get them let's get them in and smush now on this side i thought oh, this is like acrylic paint so we'll use this side this is a cereal liner this is what i use when i'm getting messy because it's free you get a free cereal liner with every box of cereal <laughs> So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I used um, antique linen and old paper um, for this. Um, and that gave us that. I like the antique linen because that kind of brought in like that yellowy um, colour. And then the antique, uh, the old paper gives it that sort of green tinge, which I quite liked. And then this is a bit of napkin decoupaged on so we're, 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 we're going to do that because I'm doing a workshop and um, and it's going to be um, using napkins because lots of people um, said they don't really use them very much they don't know how to use them or they don't like the look so I was trying to decide what to do for my workshop and Rach went I think you found your workshop Jez so I was like yeah I have haven't I so I'm just gonna put a bit of this on the page probably put too much there Jez hey ho I don't care and then I'm gonna smush this on the page where trying to avoid where I've put the other because I don't particularly want to mix some inks okay so I'm trying to fill a sort of um 12 by 12 um, sort of area. I was just there looking, thinking, where's my water spritzer? Tiny little water spritzer I've got here. I bought a pack of them, didn't I? I think I did. Um, handy. 
to have. So spritz in that over there. So um, let me do a 12 by 12 sheet and then we'll fiddle faddle with the little one. So I'm just going to let's put that on there. Marvellous. That was pretty cool. Just in one go. Sticking that down. Seeing what we get. We can always come back in and do some more. I've done this with six by six. If you check my playlist, I think I can't remember what I called it, but I think I've got using up scrapbook paper. It might be using up six by six. But I am going to be using up 12 by 12s as well, so I might combine them, I don't know. So there's that. So I'm just going to leave that to one side to dry. And um, I'm going to come in with my smaller sheet now to sort of pick up some of this before I re-ink everywhere. I do like to come in with a little bit of dib-dabbing. So I just thought I'd speed this next section up because you basically got the idea that I'm just putting ink down on my cereal liner and then picking it up. <clears throat> Excuse me, a bit croaky this morning. And uh, yeah, so I do this with all of the all of the sheets. Um, dry them off with uh, my heat gun. I'm trying there to make sure they don't get like those definite squares on it which I appear to have I'm trying to sort of smush them up I do manage it in the end because you're cutting the sheet up anyway so you're only going to see a small portion of that and some of it's going to get covered um, with um, paper napkin so it doesn't really matter um, and uh, making sure I put plenty of water on which is key and I kind of smushed um, rather than just dab squares on it I kind of smushed the ink pad a little bit which which did help with not having a, a defined square. Um, so, yeah, just adding more uh, until I've got enough ink and I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I really enjoy this process. I like getting mucky um, and messy and, and, and inky. And so now I'm just going to come in with my heat tool. I'm going to protect my desk a bit with some paper and stuff. And then just um, give it all a bit of a... Um, a dry and then I decide oh, I need a little bit more so um, and that's the thing about this is you can always add more um, you can't take it away uh, but you can you can add some more so that's what I uh, decided to do just to come in with a little bit extra and um, and I will sort of um, I find in the inking around the edges process um, that kind of helps even though um, there may be not there may be patches where there's no ink but by inking around the edges, it kind of does really make it look sort of old. So didn't need to add too much ink with a with a blending brush afterwards because um, that did the job and you are cutting it up quite small. So um, it all it all looked good in the end. Just trust the process. Right, that'll do. With them all. So now we're just going to cut them to six by four so, uh, this is directional so I want to make sure yeah so I do it I'm going to go sideways because the sixes is it in half and then the four is that way yeah nearly had a minor disaster so now we'll go four you could make them three and then you'd get more out of a sheet. I did do one that was three, although I can't see it right now to show you. So now you can see where that die is, things on it. It's all, it's all very random now. different so I'm going to get on and do this I'll probably just speed it up so 
So that is those all done. So we've been 22 minutes so far, in case you were wondering, after the, the, the speeding up. So there we go. Nice little pile of six by fours. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold down this sort of top edge. Now, I just, I didn't, I didn't um, measure anything, but we're looking at about an inch. About it. Maybe I did measure. Maybe I did. So I've used this to help me with the old straight lines. So put one of them down, use a ruler and rest that on the one inch mark, keeping it as straight as possible. That's moved now, thanks for that. There we go. And then I'm just folding in a little corner like so and fold in this side a little corner like so. So that is what I'm doing with these top corners. Shall I show you one all the way through? And then you can decide whether or not you need to, to watch any more. So we're doing that. So then I'm going to come down this mat. Don't have the mat. I'm going to turn it over the other side centimeters. Don't really matter, it's about having a straight line. So with then I'm going to put that, I'm going to do about a centimetre actually. So I've put that on a straight line, got the corners there on that line, got this here on that line. So we're going to fold up there. So that is going to be the flappy over bit of our envelope. And then we're just going to fold this up so that it's just above where this bit is. Now, if you were using, because I did do this with much thinner paper. Um, and so what I did was I just folded over a little bit on the edge. I'm trying desperately to, to see where it is on my desk. But ah, there it is. It was adding. Adding it were. So this is the, the three by three one. Um, so this is paper napkin adhered to um, freezer paper. Um, so I just turned a lip over because it was quite thin. And this one, this is a variation. Got a little bit of straw paper there for some added um, journaling. And I reinforced this, but well, I covered up these gubbins. I haven't bothered with this one. Um, and also it gives that a little bit of extra strength for going in there. I think that's cute, um, but decided not to do that. So for, for, for the actual mass make, I decided I wanted them bigger and I didn't want to um, do any more freezer paper stuff because that is going to be my workshop. So folding that up like so and then That'll be, that's your envelope covered. Now that's all been randomly done and lo and behold, they are virtually the same size. Okay, so then we'll just give that all a burnish. So um, that's that. What I haven't done, no matter, um, is those flowers are going down, down. I meant them to be that way up, don't matter. Doesn't matter, I'm doing an extra one. So let's go back to, so some of these papers aren't directional, but these ones are. So what you want to do with a directional one is um, make sure that when you fold it up, that that is up. So then when you fold down, it'll be down. So yeah, so you just need to check that. So that you're basically holding the paper upside down and that's going to give you the right, the right amount. Right, let's turn this back for an inch. That's just what I like. OK, 
can do any size you want. So there we go. Put that in. Fold these. Fold these over. There we go. That's the top bit. Right. So just to remind myself, so I need to hold the piece of paper upside down to do to do this bit. So we get all these turned over on all of them and then we'll do all of the next bit. So I will carry on doing this. I'll speed it up a bit and then I'll tell you afterwards how long it took. So that's that bit done. So we're now at 36 minutes. And you might notice, so like here, there was more ink down the bottom and less at the top. And I thought, well, you're not going to see that, so that's going to get stuck down. So um, that's why I turned some of them. So here we are. We are going to put these folded corner bits on that line so I can go to the one centimetre line and then just fold it up. So I'm going to go through and do that on each of them. And, uh, I say I think it's really important to use some sort of grid if you've got a craft map you will have lines on them if not you might have something else you could draw a line get a line some some paper and draw a straight line um, that you're gonna you're gonna follow you know draw them a centimeter apart or a quarter of an inch something like that so you don't have to have I'm using a bone folder to help me crease but you could use um, something else <laughs> it's like what could you use Jez come on tell us what you could use you could use your finger you could just run along your nail So I'm going to carry on with these um, and I'll speed it up again and then give you a quick time check. I'm hoping, oh, I was hoping I'd get this all done in less than an hour. We're at 38 minutes now. I might not get it all done. Well, not the decorating anyway. Um, so, yeah, we may not do it in under an hour but we'll see I'll shut up now
there we are so that's the last one so we're up to 44 minutes now so i'm going to give them a little bit of a score there on my bone folder and now what i'm going to do is just fold this up so i'm going about halfway along and that is that's that done so that is what we're we're doing now making sure they're all burnished i am going to put it on my school board because it's not my school board, my, my thingy board um because we do want it to be straight um there i'll just fold that and they're done so i'm going to continue with this um, quietly speed it up and that way although this is going to take me longer than an hour to do I'm hopefully going to be able to um, speed up the video so that I don't have to do a two-parter So that is them all done. We're at just under 53 minutes now. So I don't think that's bad. So what we've got to do now is we're going to glue these side bits down. You could use glue stick, um, wet glue, whatever you're happy with. I'm never happy with a glue stick, so I'm not using a glue stick. So I'll be sticking them down like so. So I'm going to go through and do that for each of them. Um, I mean, I'm going to ink and I could ink those before I go down, but I actually think that it will be possible because I'm going to, I'm going to use a bit of, think afterwards that if I do that the edges will get inked anyway so I'm not I'm not inking them they'll be they'll be fine when we get to that so I'm just gonna carry on. I think on the prototype I did but that was just one I am just gonna change my glue because actually collar doesn't stick quick it's not an instant stick and so I'm going to change to a glue with an instant stick. So I'm going to dig out my Tombow, a green Tombow Mono, because that sticks quick.
Right, that's them all done. So we're now at an hour and five minutes. Um, I will be speeding up. I'd forgotten how sticky I get with Tombow, which is why I don't use it very often. Right, so the next bit is completely optional. Um, depends if you're an inker or not. I'm an inker, so I inked around everything and then brushed some on here. So you can see it's inked everywhere. So that is what I'm doing next. I'm using Distress Ink. And um, yeah, so I'm just going around every, every edge um, because you're gonna see every edge. So I'll just do one with you and then I, I'm going to go up these creases and then we need to do the envelope flip. And we need to do the upward flip, this is the one that I went upside down on. Don't really think it matters. Makes it unique and if it was a stamp it would be more valuable because it's upside down, wouldn't it? So there we go. I don't have to bother with the back bit because that's going to get glued down. And, uh, and then we're going to come in I'm trying to get my magazine but it's not playing ball and then we'll come in with our blending brush and just go over it a little bit to give it a little bit of extra aging like that so that is what we're doing as you said that didn't take very long but obviously when you're doing 20 of them it does take a long time so and we'll carry on now and uh, speed it up and tell you where we are so we're at like 101 hour seven and a half minutes we'll see where we are when we finish So I've got to like an hour and 20 minutes and I've still got half of them left to ink. So I've decided I'm going to not film the rest of it and I'll just come back to you when I finish this and I'll kind of let you know how, how long it took. OK, so they're all done now. It took me 35 minutes to do all these. So you really do save time if you're not an inker, but I am. So that's 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 just how it is. Um, so I think I've taken an hour and 20 before. So we're up to um, 30, 40, 50. We're up to an hour and 55 um, to do this. We've still got quite a lot to go. Um, so uh, we can do the stamping next. So I just did a little bit of random stamping around so I used this same ink pad that I used previously um oh I haven't used it on this project you might not have watched this one so it's the same stamp set as I used on this one so it is um a vintage script background by Phil Martin um I don't know if it's still available I've had it donkey's years so I'm just putting some ink down on the stamp and I am just gonna 
put a bit on that bit and put a bit on that bit. There we go. And then just randomly put a few bits on the inside. Okay. So like I did before, not really thinking too much about it. Just doing, doing a little touch all the way around. So remembering sort of which way's up. Not that it really matters too much because it's a pretty, it's a pretty um, non-legible stamp set really. So I might need to re-ink now. Not a lot came out on there, Jess. Yeah, if you go to the right place, you'll get some ink. So I can kind of see where there might be a bit of bit of ink. Yeah. Might put a bit more on now. Cuz uh There we go. I've got to remember I am going to decoupage some some flowers. So I just that oh, put my elbow in the ink. Um, I I just like the way that this looks. Not too worried if it's even straight. Although I would kind of like it to be Jez if you could possibly do it that way. I think it would look a bit better if we've got a little bit. I'll straighten this on it. So I'll just continue doing this. I've done that upside down, but you can't tell. I haven't done that upside down. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm getting confused because I'm trying to be quick. So I'm going to continue with this, but I'll speed it up. So that took, we've been seven minutes. So obviously we're talking about things to begin with. So that bit was relatively quick. So now the next bit is we're gonna put some napkin on it. So I've got this napkin um, and you can see where I cut a bit out. So I'm basically just gonna go and, and I'm just gonna cut round probably be easier if I just cut along for now and we're just cutting up so we'll have that one we don't have to be too careful I haven't separated yet so we'll have that well, come in here. Might have to do a little bit of, I'll take all of that, a little bit of alterations to fit, because like that's way too big. So I would, when it came to it, I might just put that bit, so I might cut that little bit of a flower off. And, uh, Kind of, oh, I've got totally pink there, but I was kind of trying to sort of stick to a sort of a yellowy colour. Getting as much as the excess off. Not that it matters. Oh, you can't even see. Not that it matters. I'm sort of fussy cutting-ish. So, 
that will go up the side. I might even cut that purple flower out so that it is more more up the side. I might use these odd little flowers. Well, I will use them for something else. But that's sort of to cut the side like that. That pink one will be fine. We might come off the edge a little bit. So that is where we're going with that. So I'm going to come in here. And take that one. Yeah, so we're, we're definitely not going to be sticking to the yellow. We've got that. That could even end up being maybe two. So I can have that one up there like that. That'll be good. And then we've got that. Maybe I won't use that one. Uh, come up here. So I'm going to through the whole napkin and see how many I've made and if I need a second one. Nine, ten, got eleven. I'd already got one out. That was twelve. So I've one of these. So yeah, so I got twelve out of half sheet. So I get twenty-four. So actually, one napkin would be enough to do it all. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how I do a couple, and then. I might continue off camera with the rest because it's going to be quite a long process otherwise. So there we go. So now we should be able to peel off what we can. There. She says, without glasses, I can't see a thing. What are you playing at, Jess? There we go. I can see it now. There we go. That's the top layer. There's two layers there. So that. I'm going to go on there. And it should disappear quite nicely into the background. If we look-see at the, the original one I've got, you, you can't really see the outline too much it's there if you go up dead close you can but for the most part you can't so we aren't bothered we aren't bothered too much about that so i kind of had a little eyeball there so in terms of my glue stick we want quite a bit Around this bottom bit for it. So that's that on there. And then we're going to come, come out here a little bit and then up there a little bit. just went back in where I thought oh so I ain't got any up there I'll just put a bit up there we need a bit down this side might dig out 
got a slightly smaller glue stick. Might dig that out. And then I'm gonna go on the back. So it has just disappeared into there. And then we get a little little wipe and any glue stick that's left on I'll just wipe away um, we're okay and we can just get rid of that bit off the bottom there there we go go over a little bit with my brush and uh, job's a good one. Job is a good one. We'll just go up there a little bit. And that's how I added a little bit of napkin. Should we do one more? So that's another one done. So I'm going to carry on with those. So we've been 20 minutes doing this bit so far. And I got. So I'm going to carry on and I'll tell you how long I've been. OK, so they're all done. I have now lost track of time because I did these in a couple of um, sessions and I was watching something on Netflix. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to give you sort of accurate timing, but literally it's taken me a couple of hours, probably, um, probably about two and a half hours, maybe, all told. Um, so, so yeah, so that they're, they're all done. Um, I went through and if I was only making a couple of these, I wouldn't have cut out with scissors. I would have used my um, paintbrush and... Um, and then you know painted around in water and then pulled it apart um but um but i i found it quicker doing it with scissors and i think you get a better edge if it's been um ripped because it's a little bit more fluffy and you, you don't have sort of straight edges but they do blend really well into the background so you don't really notice it um that much um so so yeah and i did go in with um one of these um, sand eraser um, rubbers and sort of went along the edge a little bit, which sort of roughed it up a little bit. Um, so you add less of a less of a straight edge. So that was my little my little hack to sort of go in at the end. But I'm quite pleased with how they turned out. I'm loving that ink smushing in the background there i think it looks like nice and old so now we're just tasked with um the closure and i have gone with um half a half a rounded tab whale tail um and uh and i've got this paper that I've got these daffodils on which I thought cute so i got this paper um i didn't like because because you might see a little bit under there, um, um, I wanted to cover it in book page. So I've done that um, um, in readiness. And then it gives it a little bit more stiffness. That's really stiff now compared to that. I mean, this isn't thin paper. Um, stamping up is probably about 160 TSM, I think. But now it's got book page on and glue. It's really, really much thicker. And, and I'm not going in and punching the whole thing because I want the daffodil to be in the right orientation. So what I'm doing is having a little look-see there where there's a daffodil um, and, and then I'm punching. That, that, that flew quite far, that. Um, so I just need to then come in with my scissors 
and cut that bit and then that gives me the closure I want and then I'll obviously come in and give it a bit of an ink around the edge and it's it's good to go so that's that's what I decided to do was just go through and I'm going up a little bit there because I want that I want that daffodil just kind of flown off so now I need to cut these cut these across come in again that gives me enough of that daffodil I think or I can go for that one that'll go across there so I might be wasting you know quite a bit of paper here but I don't mind I don't think I'd use this for anything else um, this particular sheet so I'm quite happy to move it around until I get what I think looks nice like that so I'll probably end up using the other sheet as well but that's where I'm going with that and then you can easily cut them off don't know how many I've got so far two three four there done five so I will bin these I'm not keeping them I've got so many scraps there's a bit of me that's just going to bin a load because I think you can get really overwhelmed and um oh there's another one there and um so there's a bit of me that is thinking that i'd be better off getting rid of some who was i watching the other day i was watching a video of somebody and she had this really nice old book page i think she was making i think it was ali from um Crafty Ali creates, I think. I forget, sorry, Ali. And um, yeah, she was doing these book page um, tags or journaling cards and um, really, really nice book pages. And um, she just took like the, the, the middle section of the book page. So there was all the bits around the edge. And after making, I don't know, five or six, she then binned the rest and I'm like, no, oh, look at that beautiful book page. But, you know, she's probably right because I think you probably keep too much. And, uh, you know, the walls in my craft room aren't elastic. Yeah. So I'm decluttering. Why should I keep more? So I've been doing a really good job, actually. been doing some decluttering around the house as well. I'm getting a little bit obsessed. So after sort of binge-watching every decluttering video I could find on YouTube, I'm now watching, right from the beginning, Sort Your Life Out with Stacey Solomon. And um, I've uh, gone through all the glasses. And it was mainly the glasses, actually, Jess. I was going to say, oh, yeah, and mugs. Glasses and mugs. Got rid of loads. Absolutely. Ed's like, but who are you and what have you done with Jez? It's like, I don't get rid of nothing. So, yeah. Anyway, I think it's good. You watch enough. It does rub off on you. So now what I want to do is these are going to be, so I'm just going to show you how I sort of put them on. See, don't they look cute? A little bit of daft there. Um, is I'm going to, so what I want to do is sort of line up um, the edges there with the edge of the envelope flap. So we just want to glue down here and leave this unglued, if you get what I mean. So I'm going to, I'm going to come in with, this is art glitter, art glitter. Put a label on it because well it would get muddled up when we colour wouldn't it because they look exactly the same <laughs> oh dear so i'm just going to go slightly under 
there. Put my glue around there. Okay. And then I'm going to eyeball there. There's no glue on this bit that I'm putting down on the paper. And I'm like, yep, yeah, that's, that's in the right place. So now I can fold it down. Press it down. Make a slight adjustment. Got to be quick. So I'll grit the jib. And then... Hold it in, art grit it, tries really quickly. And then that is fab. So that just stay there. And that is it done. Done, done, done. So I'm going to crack on and finish those up. But I'm going to show you now how I'm going to decorate because um, then it'll all be done. So I just chose a little minimum amount of decorate. Where's my original? It's there, what you like. So I just add this, these two stamps, these two stamps. One's, um, I'm trying to find the stamp cases, but I can't see them that I took them out of. Um, there we go. So I've got from this i've got that little postmark any postmark will do i just happen to have that one and i kind of liked the size of it it is bigger than the picture this is shown at 80 percent so i've got that one and then this little um one came from oh it came from field notes didn't it so this one came out of field notes just a little um little postmarky thing well, i think it's a postmarky thing i don't know um and what i did with these Got a little pot somewhere. I made a load, Jezebel. You did make a load. Oh, I can't see them now. So I'll show you what I did. So this is piano roll. And I've gone back to Pebble Path because that's the ink I've used on everything. And I did do some of these in advance, as I say, but I don't know where they are. And I just stamped it. On the piano paper didn't take long i like using piano paper like this it's got a nice feel to it there we go just didn't take long give them a little and then i got my little no i didn't i cut them jess you, you, you cut them i'm sure you cut them because Going around them with a pair of scissors would be long and laborious. So I just cut them out. Didn't take that long. Could rule a rip. And then you'd have slightly fluffy edges. But there we go. And then did a little bit of inking. Around the edge, around the edge. You could decorate more elaborately if you if you wanted to, but I was just quite happy with um, just a little small bit of decoration. You could use labels. Um, I've got loads of Tracy labels. Um, you could put them on it, um, but I decided to make some myself. And then I just stuck that on, like so. So just on in the corner there. And then I just took my little postmark. Now this has got LA-4, which I don't know if that's Los Angeles. And the postmark's New York. So, uh, yeah, mixing me places. But there you go and then i just stamped it over there that says 1924 loved it so that is what i'm doing so i'm going to get on and get them done um and then we'll be and then we'll be finished with our 
with our mask make and i've probably spent in total maybe maybe three hours doing this um but it's all fun it's all fun um and maybe if my mask make was you know i was making half as many not many times you would make 20 odd is there um it would have it would have been much quicker so i'll come back to you when these are all done okay so they're all finished and i decided in the end because i never stopped that I wanted to add something. So I just went into my little scraps of um, cheesecloth and and I just added a word in the corner to, to each of those. Um, most of them are not the spring related words that I made. They're the sort of generic sort of journaling prompt sort of words. Anyway, I liked, I liked the look of putting something in that corner there so now they're all ready um for uh, a journaling page uh, a, a journal page um yeah so i am trying to decide if i'm going to make um a little envelope or something to to put these in um to to give out um and if i do i might just show you quickly how how i did that but yeah that's my my mass make um envelope pocket journaling spots um for the rachel bella craft retreat i can't wait um so yeah hope you enjoyed that so i'm kind of killing two birds with one so making it a mass make march as well and um and i bring you something soon um i'm not sure when this is going out um but um yeah I, uh, I am working in advance because obviously if you're going away for a weekend, you need to have some things um, ready to schedule out. So I will be bringing you things that I've made at the retreat um, as well. So do look out for that. Uh, please um, like and subscribe. Um, I do appreciate everybody um, that has subscribed to my channel and then keeps watching. And I love to welcome new people as well. So, um, yeah, um, just... Uh, uh, there should be a subscribe button coming somewhere and um and then press that bell so you know when i've uploaded excuse my inky fingers but that i ink around all these little little words okay bye for now see you all again soon